from my heart and from my hand Why don't people understand my intention? Hey, FOT Nation, it's Tim Sackett. I'm back with you with the second video cast, Weird Science, brought to you by the great folks at Higher View. And today, I am really, really excited to have with me Jennifer Hugo from Corvertis. Is that right, Jennifer? Yes, exactly right. I, awesome. I didn't want to butcher the name, so that would be horrible. Anyways, Corvertis is, a, is a, an HR vendor, uh, HR tech company that is taking and using science to put culture and... Um, Oh gosh, help me out. Um, basically, <laughs> basically taking um, cultural fit type of science and data and, and allowing it to put into talent processes, talent acquisition processes yes. within companies. So the entire intent is, is like, hey, you're going to hire great people that fit your culture, right? Yes, we create intentional cultures that live your brand through hiring tools, developmental assessments, as well as employee experience tools. Awesome. So the reason I wanted to bring Jennifer on, one is she's a PhD from Bowling Green in IO psychology. She's the chief scientist for, uh, for Corvertis. And so obviously in weird science, we want to talk about the science of hiring. And, and for this segment, um, in the number two weird science video cast, we want to talk about cultural fit and the science behind that. So I'm going to get right into the questions, Jennifer. The first one is, what are, the cur what are our current talent acquisition pros missing when it comes to cultural fit? That's a fantastic question. So first we need to define what exactly is culture and then what is exactly culture for your company. So we define culture and I personally define culture as a shared beliefs and values about success and what it takes to achieve that success and that's exactly how we measure it. So this determines how your people think and behave and for leadership it gives you the confidence that when you're not there to supervise all the actions and decisions that go on on a day-to-day -day basis you know that they're aligning with your brand and with your vision for the company. And I, you know, and I, one of the things I think about, like, and I think that's it's more difficult than what it seems. So we all think we know what culture is, right? And like I'm sitting there, like, oh, I just interviewed this guy, and he went to Michigan State, and I'm a big Michigan State fan. We <laughs> both drink gin and tonic, so oh, he's going to fit our culture great. And then you realize that those are two tiny little pieces of data <laughs> in terms of what your culture might be, and it's my culture, not necessarily my company's culture which becomes a huge issue. Exactly. It's very easy with culture, just like personality, to fall victim to the like me bias. So we see that person that we're friends with that likes the same things we do, and we think they would be great for our company. Or we see a company, and we think that has a great culture. But what exactly does that mean? What is a great culture? How do we define success? It can be a huge monumental point of success or failure for a company. If you have the right core values, you can be successful. If you don't, then it can be a failure for the company. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off script and, and throw a wrench at you already. And so, so that's one of those things when you sit there and say, you know, if you have the right core values, right? How, mm -hmm. does, a, how does a company, or wh what would you suggest, how does a company really go and do that, right? Because in my mind, and I've been, you know, in a big company, small companies, and they're like, oh, we want to you know, develop a vision and we want to develop our core values. And they throw <laughs> out like surveys to all the employees. But the reality is as a leader, right, now I run my own company. I don't necessarily want what everybody else wants for a culture. I, I have a, a vision of what my culture I want and I want to drive that. So how do companies actually go about kind of measuring that or doing that or figuring that out? What you gave was a very accurate description. It has to start with leadership and leadership, leadership should start to think about how they define success, what do they want to achieve with their company, and what are the different values that will support that. So we might hear a company say, well, we want a culture for accountability. Well, if you want accountability, maybe you need to value courage, doing what is right even when it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Because if you have courage, then it's going to make accountability easier by emphasizing that core value. So companies need to consider how they define success, what they think might get there, what beliefs. So a belief might be, if we take care of our employees, they'll take care of our customers in ways that will increase loyalty and will increase uh, revenue over time. And that grounds, well, we need to take care of our employees. So how exactly do we do that? And then you can start getting into those surveys and understanding what the employees think to inform how you live your culture. So it's all about beginning with the end in mind. Yeah, and I think it's one of the bigger things I think leadership fails at is when they go, they, they immediately jump to the survey, and, mm -hmm. and, then, and then what they're creating, and when they get to the end and they go, gosh, this doesn't feel like the culture I want or the vision I had for a culture, 
mm-hmm. and you're like, well, it isn't because it's the culture that all your employees want, and it might not be complete. It might be completely different than where you want to go with that culture. All right, I'm right. gonna I'm gonna jump back into the science a little bit. And so, in regards for companies making great hires, um, what is the data telling us uh, when it comes to cultural fit? Well, unfortunately, in the field, we don't have as much data as we would have liked. Uh, because unfortunately that process that we've been talking about of benchmarking and defining culture and measuring it uh, doesn't happen too often. But if we look at a quality hire as someone who performs, fits, and stays with the organization for a long time, you can have a high performer who doesn't stay, but it's much less likely that you'll have a poor fit who continues to stay with the organization. And the importance of fit only increases with physician, as you might know. So at the C-level, terminations are much more likely to be around fit than competence. So new hires at the executive level, they often have those technical skills narrowed, nailed down, you know, exactly what they're doing, but they don't fit with the group and they don't align with the vision and the core values. That's what my experience and the data tell us. So when we take it, when we start to look at in the future, right, like at predictive analytics and some of that stuff, mm-hmm. where do you where do you see it going when it comes to do you foresee a time when a company can, um, you know, literally just go out, give an assessment, and and have some have a really clear understanding how that person is going to fit in their culture, or do you think we're already there? That's definitely on the horizon that with once you have the core values narrowed down and you know what equals success in your organization, that you could have a fine-tuned assessment to be able to understand that fit. Uh, definitely including things like structured interviews that ask about those core values and help to understand how a person could respond in situations and live the, the vision in core situations to the organization. Cool. All right. Last question, and then we'll get you out of here. Um, I'm already, I'm already off. So if you were to sit, if you were to sit down in front of a struggling organization, and I know you guys have great clients that you work with and some that probably come in, in this capacity of saying, we, we need to get our hands around this. Mm -hmm. Um, what advice do you guys give them in terms of hiring for culture fit? So think about it in terms of, I mean, I'm not a big fortune 500 company that can afford a hundred grand or a million dollars or whatever to do this. I'm, you know, a small, medium sized business and, we just we need to do this better. We need to have better cultural fit hires. What, what, what advice do you give them? Well, we deal a lot with small and medium-sized businesses, and first they need to decide what their culture is. So they don't have to use anyone's definition, but they just need to have a shared definition of what success is. What is our culture? What are our shared beliefs surrounding success? And it's okay to have different cultural values within different levels of the organization or different areas. They just can't conflict. You need to have that same shared vision. So different departments can have different levels of accountability. We know one CEO, for example, that holds his direct reports to a much higher level of accountability than he does his entry-level or mid-level managers. And so understanding that culture would be the first part of of success. Um, We also know that teams who believe, from research that we've done, teams who believe that managers are living their vision and culture and the team members were provided with a list of what the vision and culture is, Mm -hmm. they have half the turnover significantly greater cash flow, customer loyalty, profits, and customer engagement overall. So, so a huge ROI yes. right, right away, you know, from that Definitely. standpoint. Um, so when you, when you think about, you know, um, the leader disconnect in, um, in terms of cultural fit between the organizations and stuff like that, do you think that ultimately is probably one of the, one, one of the things that most companies are failing at right now is that they're, they're just not being – they're not being able to drive that message down or is it more of in my mind I'm thinking this is all marketing right like if I have a great vision of what my culture wants to be and I do a great job marketing it to my own people and they buy into it right like that mm-hmm. you know they, they they are they're diet coke drinkers but I'm marketing the crap out of diet pepsi and I make them diet pepsi drinkers isn't that ultimately what we're doing <laughs> isn't that in culture? Isn't that like we're trying? If we buy into what I'm, what I think the culture is, then we're all going to buy in. Thus, you're going to stay around longer. And you're going to do all of that. So it's not science; it's marketing. Is that what you're saying? No, not, not at all. There's definitely a strong marketing component to it, but marketing today is also fueled by science. So we need to understand what the culture is, and then measure it consistently, and make sure that all the different parts of the organization are aligned behind the culture. So are your hiring processes your internal policies and procedures, how you deal with uh, crises and challenges, 
Are you living your culture each day? And how is each area of the organization acting and rolling out uh, its culture? So we can understand, we can use our gut to understand culture, but if we don't have the science and the measurement to back it up, we don't have any precision really about making decisions about how we're living our culture. And that's the core right now, right? Is, and 99% of us are using our gut when it comes to cultural fit. <laughs> And uh, at least uh, you probably be, be better if you just took a 50-50, you know, coin flip and did it yourself that way. So cool, Jennifer. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, make sure you guys check out Corvertus. Um, is it Corvertus.com, right? Yes. In uh, in their cultural fit science and and what they're doing over there, some good stuff. Um, once again, you're listening to the Weird Science podcast, and I want to thank the folks over at Higher View for sponsoring this. FOT Nation. That's it. That's it. We're out. Uh, look back for number three coming soon. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention?